The heroes in My Hero Academia Season 6 Episode 12 need a little bit of help right now because they're definitely in an extremely dangerous and desperate situation. So in this video, we're going to discuss the return of Lemillion, how that happened, and what happens after. So like I've already said, the heroes are in a very, very hopeless situation, and everyone's efforts so far have lended to helping them get out of it. But now we're at a point where everything that the heroes have still doesn't measure up against the total power of the villains, right? We had Dobby going crazy last week. Shigaraki obviously took a lot of the heroes in that area out, and now the rest of them are facing high-end Nomus. And we know already what happened to pretty much everyone at the Gunga Mountain Villa where the villains were originally located because Gigantomachia has already torn through that area. But I feel like this episode, one of the biggest points that you can take away from it is that even the smallest efforts by people who can't even be here to contribute towards a victory can have a very mighty impact if they never give up. But we'll get to that in a second of course, because we're going to talk about how Mirio Togata trained his quirk from something that was only seen as a weakness into the kind of ability that allowed him to decimate all of Class 1A and almost solo the eight precepts of death leadership in one fell swoop. And if you recall, in Season 4, we did see that, that when Mirio's quirk first activated, he ended up falling through a bridge into the water and needing to be saved by a hero. And for most people, that would scare them a great deal, but I feel like Mirio took after that hero who saved them a lot, and that made him want to get better at using this quirk can get even more capable so that he can do the same, with his hero name of course coming from the fact that he wants to save a million people. And to be fair, he does turn a quirk that makes you fall through the floor into a really, really broken one with him finding an ability to pretty much teleport through the ground into other locations by activating his quirk when he's in a space that he's not supposed to be able to be into as he's full of matter and allowing the world to kind of course correct and shunt him to a different location. But of course, one of the big weaknesses for Mirio's permeate quirk is that when he's trying to face through something he has to hold his breath so he has to be aware that he's going to do it it's not just something that happens automatically and i mean it's a good thing that it doesn't happen automatically but sometimes i'm sure you would want it to happen automatically so back in season four mirio did utterly dominate pretty much the entire leadership of overhaul's gang in one fell swoop however the bullets made from Ares quirk made Mirio lose his power. And we did also see that, that he was hit by the bullet while trying to save Aerie, diving in the way to protect her because he didn't want her to lose her quirk or potentially give up on the dream that she doesn't even know that she has yet. And Mirio does take that sacrifice. And then I'm sure he goes and cleans bathrooms at UA for a while. But what I've always liked about Mirio and Aerie's introduction into the story in the same arc is how the story has kind of branched out since then and the parallels that now exist between Mirio and Aerie. You see, much like Mirio, Aerie has now been training her quirk which is only seen as a curse for all heroes. And it's really thanks to Aizawa, who we've seen trying to find the best way to train her quirk for a while, like when he went to go get Monoma at the end of the Class 1A versus Class B battles. But ultimately, it seems like Aizawa landed on using a lizard for Aerie's quirk training, especially seemingly ones that can remove their tails. And that's most likely so she has something easy to visualize on, and because they're small, so they probably only require a minimal amount of Aerie's energy. Now, people seem to misunderstand Aerie's quirk quite often, but it's the kind of quirk that builds up energy over time, and it seems like to use it on a person at her current level of control, that it takes months for her energy to restore after needing to use it on something the size of a human body. Considering that she's been building up energy ever since the overhaul arc when she used it all on Deku, and it took the rest of the energy that she had left over after using, you know, some energy on Geckos, I can't imagine that much, to actually get Mirio back to his proper shape. And with the drive of saving Mirio much like he saved her, she does muster up enough control to finally use what little energy she's been able to store up on her horn to bring the hero Lemillion back to life. But that likely means that in the near future, she won't be able to use her quirk again to give the heroes this sort of situation. Like, a lot of people think that she's going to heal All Might or something in the final arc. I've even seen theories that she's going to heal All Might and then Deku's going to give the quirk back. I think that would be ridiculous. But every time theories like that pop up, I really just feel like, no, I don't think Eri has enough energy to use her quirk on a human body again. So I think we're safe on that. And actually using the quirk on Mirio here and rewinding Mirio does save us from Eri coming in and saving the day at the very end with her quirk which is, to be fair, a very broken problem solver if it suddenly starts to be written that way. Now, not having Aerie to count on in the final battle sounds really good for the villains, but here in this episode, I feel like something is off at Studio Bones, right? Usually I'm complaining because, like, I don't like the way the episode looks or something, but I feel like this week something is inherently just wrong because it seems like Aerie rewinds Mirio not to 100% and back to normal,
normal. This week, it seems like Airy rewinds Mirio to a million percent Mirio, like full cowling Mirio somehow. Because Mirio is just really impressive in this episode as far as the way that he's just handling high-end Nomu, when in the manga, that's not actually something that he's capable of doing. And even in the episode, he mentions that he's not capable of doing that, even though we see him doing that. Like, there's literally points in the episode where we see Mirio just kind of teleporting through the air, even though that's not how his quirk works. He has to go through a surface to teleport, and even still, he's traveling through it when he does it, so it wouldn't be instantaneous like that. But I will say, I really did like at least their attempt at giving Mirio some great animation for his high-end Nomu fight, because it's not like he got it when he was fighting Chisaki. They did that with a slideshow, if you remember. Now, this is just really funny to me, the way that Mirio looks so strong in this episode, because it's even consistent a little later on in the story that Mirio isn't really able to tussle with characters at that level, at that Shigaraki or high-end Nomu level. And if you guys get this video to 1300 likes, I guess I could tell the story of the time that Mirio actually ended up fighting Shigaraki, which is a really awesome story from the manga. But in this episode, Mirio states that he's coming from where Night Eye's agency was stationed in this operation to help the hero secure the win here, and he definitely couldn't have come at a better time because he saves Best Genus from multiple high-end Nomu that are coming after him as Best Genus tries to lock Gigantomachia down. Now, in the episode, we do see that Gigantomachia ends up going down and Anyway, because of a mixed hit between Endeavor and the sedative that Momo and the others were able to feed to him. But we do get this cool moment of Mirio, Bakugo, and Nejire having this cool combination attack. And all the while, we just see Dobby kind of burning everything down and talking trash to Shoto. It's, it's a really chaotic episode, and it kind of mirrors the fact that this was a very chaotic section in the manga. It seemed like there was a lot of reveals, there was a lot of stuff happening in this final section, and it wasn't handled the best that it possibly could have been, but it does make for very entertaining television, honestly. Also, in this episode, episode I want to point out, I think this is the first time that Bakugo and Mirio have ever met, right? And they do share a little bit of conversation with Mirio telling Bakugo more or less his motto that a world without humor can't exist, right? You can't have heroes without a little humor. The right hero is going to have a little bit of that. Those aren't his exact words. I definitely just made it longer. I think he said it better than I did. And some of the last bits that we saw of Mirio in this episode was him pretty much looking to go and capture the League of Villains, especially Shigaraki, Spinner, and Compress, who are all on Gigantomachia's back now with Gigantomachia not being able to actually help them. But we know that ultimately Mirio is going to fail to capture Shigaraki because he's blown back by Shigaraki's giant air blast or whatever it is that Shigaraki does. Still very confusing to me because Mirio is the kind of character who should be able to phase through that. But hey, let's say for some reason he can't phase through air. That's his one weakness. Inasa would clap. But despite the fact that Mirio did make his reappearance here at the hands of Eri and her amazing quirk, he actually didn't manage to be all that useful in this scenario, right? He did come in for the very, very clutch save on Best G. But after that, Mirio's appearance here is actually pretty brief, and that made a lot of people question whether or not this was even the best point to bring Mirio back in, right? Because it's kind of like, it feels a little anticlimactic with all the drama and everything going on in Season 4 when Mirio lost his quirk, and all the scenes that we've gotten leading up to this reveal of him getting his quirk already healed off screen. I personally think it's pretty interesting that Mirio was ready to come back during the war arc, because ever since Shisaki told us that his gang had a quirk deleter and an antidote that Shigaraki stole along with the rounds, I picture the hero raiding the villains and starting a war much like this one in an attempt to, among other things, retrieve this antidote for it to be used on Mirio. But at the very end of this arc, of course, we see Horikoshi definitely subverting thoughts from people like that by bringing Mirio back in the war arc himself through other means. But the way that it was handled, honestly, as much as people could probably argue that it should have been done at a different time, and I feel like I've even argued that point, I feel like this moment at the very least does pay off the hard work and determination of both the character of Eri and Lemillion. So in my Academia Season 4, we saw the end of Lemillion with him losing his quirk, and in My Hero Academia Season 6, we see the rebirth of Lemillion, with Aerie giving him his quirk back using her ability, and that means everything has kind of come full circle, or I guess not full circle, because that means you end up where you started off, and Aerie is definitely in a different place. But do look to see Lemillion once again in Season 7 of My Hero Academia. He does play a part in the final battle against Shigaraki, and I will say he is much more useful there than he is in this fight mainly because I believe he's accepted his weakness, that he's not the holder of one for all who has all this dominating power, that that's Deku, and that there's other ways that he could definitely be helpful in the fight. Now, in that video that I'll make if you guys hit the like goal, we're going to talk a little more about the relationship between Deku and Mirio and how their characters have developed throughout the series and their fight against Shigaraki together. And I feel like that would be a better video to touch on the actual parallels that there are between Mirio and Deku beyond just their birthday, because these characters definitely go through very opposite journeys. And I feel like that's 
that's something that'd be very, very interesting to touch on, but you guys gotta want it, right? You guys gotta show me that you want it, so please get the video to 1300 likes, and we will talk about that exact moment where the big three and Deku take on Shigaraki in the final war arc. As far as the rest of My Hero Academia Season 6, Episode 12, I mean, I was not vastly impressed with the way that the episode looked, but there were sections that looked really, really good, actually, like Bakugo using his explosions, like some of the Mirio stuff, like some of the Dobby faces that he was making, but you could tell that this episode was, I don't want to say it was handled by a different team or anything like that, but something just feels a little off. Maybe it's just way more of a conservative episode and we have something fire coming up, but it's episode 12 and I, I don't know, it's just something is a little off. I'm not complaining about it and hating on it and saying it's awful and it's terrible, but something is definitely off and I did see people on the timeline before I watched the episode saying that this might be the worst episode in all of My Hero Academia history and having watched it, I feel like that's definitely overblowing it a bit, but at the same time, I can't really remember a lot of My Hero Academia. No, My Villain Academia. Always My Villain Academia. <laughs> or ironically enough, the Muriel versus Chisaki fight. <laughs>